counting inversions. We've uh, spent some time discussing approaches to solving a number of common recurrences. The remainder of the chapter will illustrate the application of divide and conquer to problems from a number of uh, different domains. We will use what we've seen in the previous sections to bound the running times of these algorithms. We begin by showing how a variant of the merge sort technique can be used to solve problem that is not directly related to sorting numbers. The problem, we will consider a problem that arises in the analysis of rankings, which are becoming important to a number of uh, current applications. For example, a number of sites on the web make use of the technique known as collaborative filtering, in which they try to match your preference for books, movies, restaurants with those of other people out on the internet. Once the website has identified people with uh, similar tastes to yours based on a comparison of how you and they rate various things, it can recommend new things that these other people have liked. Another application arises in meta search tools on the web which execute the same query on many different search engines and uh, they try to synthesize the results by looking for similarities and the differences among the various rankings that the search engines return. A core issue in applications like this is the problem of comparing two rankings. You rank a set of M movies and then a collaborative filtering system consults its a database to look for other people who had similar rankings. But what's a good way to measure numerically how similar two people's rankings are? Clearly, an identical ranking is very similar, and a completely reversed ranking is very different. We want something that interpolates through the middle region. Let's uh, consider comparing your ranking and uh, a stranger's ranking of the same set of M movies. A natural method would be to label the movies from 1 to N according to your ranking. Then order these labels according to the stranger's ranking and see how many pairs are out of order. More concretely, we will consider the following problem. We are given a sequence of n numbers a1, a2, a3 until an. We will assume that all the numbers are distinct. We want to define a measure that tells us how far this list is from being in ascending order. The value of the measure should be 0 if a1 is less than a2, less than a3, and so on less than an, and it should increase as the numbers become more scrambled. A natural way to quantify this notion is by counting the number of inversions. We say that two indices i less than j form an inversion if ai is greater than aj, that is, if uh, the two elements ai and aj are out of order, we will seek to determine the number of uh, inversions in the sequence a1, a2, a3, and an. Just to pin down this definition, consider an example in which the sequence is 2, 4, 1, 3, 5. There are three inversions in this sequence, 2, 1, 4, 1, and uh, 4, 3. There is also an appealing geometric way to visualize the inversions. We draw the sequence of input numbers in the order they are provided and below that in ascending order. We then draw a line segment between each number in the top list and its copy in the low list. Each crossing pair of line segments corresponds to one pair that is in the opposite order in the two lists, in other words, an inversion. Now, note that how the number of inversions is a measure that smoothly interpolates between a complete agreement when the sequence is in ascending order, then there are no inversions, and a complete disagreement if the sequence is in a descending order, then every pair forms an inversion, and so there are n choose two of them. Designing and analyzing the algorithm. What is uh, the simplest algorithm to count inversions? Clearly, we could look at every pair of numbers a i h a and determine whether 
they constitute an inversion. This would take big O of n squared time. We now show how to count the number of inversions much more quickly. In big O of n log n time, note that since there can be a quadratic number of inversions, such an algorithm must be able to compute the total number without ever looking at each inversion individually. The basic idea is to follow the strategy defined in section 5.1. We set m equals to the ceiling floor of n over 2, that is uh, rounding up, and uh, divided the list into two pieces, a1, a2, a3 under am, and am plus 1, am plus 2, and so on until an. We first count the number of inversions in each of these two halves separately. Then we count the number of inversions AIAJ, where the two numbers belong to different halves. The trick is that we must do this part in big O of n time. If we want to apply 5.2, note that these first half, second half inversions have a particularly nice form. They are precisely the pairs AIAJ, where AI is in the first half, AJ is in the second half and AI is greater than AJ. To help with counting the number of inversions between the two halves, we will make the algorithm recursively sort the numbers in the two halves as well. Having the recursive uh, step do a bit more work, sorting as well as counting inversions will make the combining portion of the algorithm easier. So the crucial routine in this process is merge and count. Suppose we have recursively sorted the first and the second halves of the list and counted the inversions in each. We now have to sort the lists A and B containing the first and the second halves, respectively. We want to produce a single sorted list C from their union while also counting the number of pairs a, b with uh, little a in capital A and a little b in capital B, and the little a is greater than little b. By our previous discussion, this is precisely what we will need for the combining step that computes the number of first half, second half inversions. This is closely related to the simpler problem we discussed in chapter 2, which formed the, the corresponding combining step for merge sort. There, we had to sort the lists A and B, and uh, we wanted to merge them into a single sorted list in big O of n time. The difference here is that we want to do something extra. Not only should we produce a single sorted list from A and B, but we should also count the number of inverted pairs AB, where little a is in capital A, little b is in capital B, and uh, little a is greater than little b. It turns out that we will be able to do this in a very much the same style that we used for merging. Our merge and count routine will walk through the sorted lists A and B, removing elements from the front and appending them to the sorted list C. In a given step, we have a current pointer into each list showing our current position. Suppose that these pointers are currently at elements ai and uh, bj. We compare the elements ai and bj being pointed to in each list, remove the, the smaller one from its list, and append it to the end of list c. This takes care of merging. How do we also count the number of inversions? Because a and b are sorted, it is actually very easy to keep track of the number of inversions we encounter. Every time the element AI is appended to C, no new inversions are encountered. Since AI is smaller than everything left in list B, and it comes before all of them. On the other hand, if BJ is appended to list C, then it is smaller than all the remaining items in A, and it comes after all of them, so we increase our count of the number of inversions by the number of elements remaining in A. This, this is, is uh, the, crucial the crucial idea. idea. In constant time, we have accounted for a potentially large number of inversions. See figure 5.5 5 5 for, 5 for an illustration, for an illustration of, uh, of, this, of this problem.
To summarize, we have the following algorithm. Merge and account of AB. Maintain a current pointer to into each list. We have the following algorithm. To point to the front Merge elements and the count. of A and B. Maintain a variable count for the number of inversions. Maintain a current pointer initialized to each list to be initialized zero. to point to the front Next elements. Is a while loop. While Maintain both a lists variable. are non-empty, let A i and B j be the elements pointed to by the current pointer append uh, the smaller of these two to the output list. If bj is the smaller element, then increment count by the number of elements remaining in A and if. Advance uh, the count pointer in the list from which the smaller element was selected. Once uh, one list is empty, append uh, the remainder of the other list to the output and the return count and uh, the merge the list. The running time of merge and count can be bounded by the analog of uh, the argument we used for the original merging algorithm at the heart of merge sort. Each iteration of the while loop takes constant time, and in each iteration, we add some elements to the output that will never be seen again. Thus, the number of iterations can be at most the sum of the initial lengths of A and B, and so the total running time is big of N. We use uh, this uh, merge and account routine in a recursive procedure that simultaneously sorts and accounts the number of inversions in the list A. Now the higher level is sort and account. Sort and account of L. If uh, the list has one element, then there are no inversions. Else, we divided the list into two halves. A contains the first uh, Ceiling functions of n over two elements, and b contains the remaining floor functions of n over two elements. Or a a is uh, the output of sort and account of a. Or b b is the output of the sort and account of b. Or l is the output of merge and account of a b we have discussed before. Then and if. Finally, uh, the sort and count function returns r equals to r a plus r b plus r and uh, the sorted the list l. Since our merge and account procedure takes big O of n time, the running time t of n of the full sort and account procedure satisfies the recurrence 5.1. By 5.2, we have 5.7, the sort and account algorithm correctly sorts the input list and accounts the number of inversions. It runs in big O of n log n time for a list with n elements.